Happy Wednesday, guys. It is Shayna here, life coach, educator, and hardcore homebody living in sunny Los Angeles. Fun fact. Today, I wanna talk about failure, everyone's favorite topic. More specifically, I'm sharing my tips on how to move past failure so that it doesn't suck you up and spit you out, leaving you beaten and bruised and apparently covered in saliva. Let's get to a land where failing is fun. Okay, maybe not fun, but to a place where it's not that big of a deal. It's just part of the success package. Once you've come to terms with that and accepted as part of the package and are willing to experience failure because your goals are too important, it's then helpful to know how to move past it as quickly and efficiently as possible so that you keep going and you don't give up. First, what is defined as a failure? Because the truth is, something is only a failure if you think it's a failure. Failure, my friends, is subjective. For example, somebody who sells 100 copies of their book may think, wow, that was a massive fail, while somebody else thinks, oh my God, 100 copies, amazing. So I want you to understand that something is not a failure unless you make it mean it's a failure. And failure doesn't even have to mean something bad, right? You get to decide. You get to decide if failure is bad and means that your business will never succeed or you can decide that failure is a good thing and it means you're just moving forward and getting closer to your goal. So your thinking around a result and route to your goals is what makes something a failure or a success or anything in between. One way that we stamp something as a failure is by placing expectations on our results. For example, let's say that I launch a new coaching program and in my mind, I tell myself, okay, I expect to get 100 new signups on the first day. If I get 100 new signups on the first day, I'll be super happy and feel great. And then if and when that doesn't happen, I immediately feel bad and like a failure, right? Now, that's not to say that you don't create specific goals. If your goal is to get 100 signups, that's great. But just because it didn't happen the way you thought it would doesn't mean it will never happen. And that's really important to remember when you're in the thick of any disappointment as a result of your own expectations. So in that situation, you must commit to your belief that you will get to that result. It's just not in that way. It's like an actor who gets a lead role after going on 120 auditions and thinks, oh my God, yes, finally, this is my big break. And then the movie completely tanks and goes straight to cable TV. Don't make the result or lack thereof mean anything about you and what you're capable of. You simply look at it objectively. Okay, this worked really well. This didn't work so well. I could improve in this area. Let's try this next. I'm going to try this different approach now. That's what approaching your result in an objective way without the messy thinking looks like. My next tip is to show yourself some compassion. Listen, the last thing you want to do is beat yourself up for not achieving the result you wanted, okay? Just know that all that criticism, judgment, and self-doubt by default will rise to the surface. It's your primitive brain's way of telling you, I told you so. But that's okay. Just expect that. The more you put yourself out there and fail, the better you get at brushing it off because again, you're prepared for it and you know that it's coming. That's what our brains do. They try to keep us quote unquote safe in the cave, not taking risk out in the world. And the way it attempts to keep us in our caves is by bullying us. So you want to be super aware of the self-talk going on in your head in order to manage that inner critic of yours. And instead, you wanna show yourself the utmost compassion. Compassion for your strength and effort that you put forth. Compassion for 
for how far you've already come on your own journey. Compassion for being a human being and having a human experience. Compassion for actually getting in the arena in the first place, taking the action and experiencing that negative emotion. With that being said, lastly, Don't be afraid to feel the negative emotions that any failure or better yet thoughts of failure bring your way. If you want to grieve and feel sorry for yourself, my gosh, do it. Don't try to be above it and resist any of your feelings. You just want to know that you're the one creating it because of what you're making that failure mean. And then once you've cried it out, you want to pick yourself up and keep going. Guys, no joke, there have been times in the past where I've been curled up in a ball crying over my own failures at 9 p.m. And by the time 7 a.m. rolls around, I am back at my desk trying or creating something new. I know, how is that even possible? Well, I'll tell you. For starters, I know that it's me creating my disappointment and my sorrow through what I'm making the failure mean. So I take full responsibility for my thinking and in turn for my feelings. Because if it's me that's causing me to curl up in a ball, then I know I have the power to pick myself back up and keep going, right? Because if I blame the world and the external results, I become powerless. So instead of being a victim, I grab onto a belief that pulls me out. Something like, this is okay. This just wasn't the way to get the result I want. It's some other way and I'm gonna figure it out. Or this is normal. Everybody fails en route to success. This is just my journey. Or it's okay. I learned from this. I know what to try next and I'm grateful for that. I am just one step closer. So all it takes literally to move past any failure is one powerful belief to create a better feeling and drive your action forward. I don't need more customers or more validation to get me going. I just need to have my own back. And on a final note, just to reiterate, failure doesn't need to be a bad thing. You get to decide what it means. And when you choose to believe that it's a great learning experience, an opportunity to become stronger and one step closer to your desired results, honey, success is yours. All right, that is what I have for you today. Thank you so much for being here. If you're enrolled in recess, grab your worksheet in the description below. If you're watching this and have not yet taken your 60 second career mindset quiz, be sure to do that now. The link is down below as well. I'll see you next week. Bye.